What are you doing? I finished my homework. I finished my homework. This nine-year-old elementary school student showed her winter break Chinese homework. It is three meters long when printed out, and there is still more. Look at the homework assigned by my Chinese teacher. It's really tough. There are a few more sheets left, and it's still not finished printing. Oh, this is too much. Because it's nearing the end of the term, the language arts teacher assigned a little bit more homework for the weekend. When printing it out, his sister was holding one end, and she found it funny and a bit helpless. The child is now nine years old and in the fourth grade of elementary school. The test paper is probably about three meters long, almost filling up the entire living room. There are six test papers, probably because it's all one-sided only. It's 24 sheets, so it seems a bit too much. When the child saw so much homework, he felt frustrated because he didn't want to do it. He's helpless, but had to do it. Why do Chinese students have so much homework? It can be said that staying up late to do homework is a common practice for Chinese students, not because they are lazy or reluctant to do it, but because the amount of homework in Chinese schools is estimated to be the highest in the world. They not only have to study for core courses, but also have handcraft and take-home assignments. And some parents even buy other practice questions separately for their children to use as exercise books. Why distribute so much homework? This is the involution in Chinese education. Since 2020, the word involution has become a popular internet slang word in mainland China. It expresses the relentless pursuit of success and the intense pressure of internalized competition which result in burnout and overwork. Nowadays, involution can be found everywhere in China, from college to the workplace. Even children who have just started to speak are feeling the pressure of competition. The means that Chinese parents use to cope with involution are even more daunting. A recent post on Chinese social media, Weibo, went viral and left people shuddering after reading it. In a private clinic of an old Chinese medicine doctor in Guangdong province, a child of about four or five years old lay on a massage bed undergoing spinal correction. He screams in pain, but his mother extends a math tutoring app through a space in the massage bed, telling him not to waste time and to do math problems while undergoing correction. The poor child had to endure the pain, screaming loudly while answering. What's even more terrifying is that the blogger later added that after the child's correction was completed, it was his mother's turn. While she received her treatment, she loudly tested the multiplication tables on the child. Some netizens expressed sympathy for the mother, thinking that educating children is not easy for her. Unfortunately, this post was blocked a day later. Has involution in China made these parents lose their rationality? Or has the current state of China's education gone mad to the point of being incomprehensible? However, this incident is not a unique case. Other people have also shared their experiences online, accusing involution in Chinese education are driving parents and children crazy. Many Chinese parents focus on grades at the expense of their child's well-being. Some people shared what they came across in their daily lives. For example, I previously encountered a child who drank pesticide and ended up in the ICU at the age of 10. His condition stabilized on the first day, and when his parents came to visit, they brought him two test papers. Others shared their own experiences, such as, I suffered severe anxiety and nervous breakdowns in college and took indefinite leave in another city. It took me eight hours to get home. My parents first told me not to be anxious and to rest for a while, then they immediately asked me when I would return to school. You'll miss a lot of classes, they said. These comments disappeared from major social media platforms a few hours later, as if these negative comments had never appeared. Not only are there increasing complaints, but even Chinese hospitals are fully reflecting the state of student overwork. Nowadays, the wards of Chinese hospitals have almost turned into study areas. In November last year, with the severe flu outbreak and respiratory diseases at a peak, pediatric hospitals across the country were packed with children needing IV fluids. Under normal circumstances, children who are sick should rest properly. However, these sick children have no time to rest. Instead, they sit neatly in the hospital's specially designated study area, with needles in their left hands and pens in their right, diligently doing practice questions. These images even circulated on X, and many international users couldn't believe such things could happen. They thought these images must have been generated by AI, but they were mistaken. The phenomenon of hospitals setting up children's study space while getting IV treatment is no longer surprising in China. 
instead of seeing elementary school students kneeling pitifully on the ground, spreading textbooks on chairs while receiving IV and doing exercises, it's better to allocate a specific area for them. For many hospitals in China, building such learning areas is considered a considerate move. The First People's Hospital of Nantong City in Jiangsu Province is one of them. A dedicated learning area was established on the second floor of the hospital. Hospital staff explained that the learning area is for emergency use by students who haven't completed their homework. Although such practices are not encouraged, students still carry their IV drips around, looking for tables and places with light to do their homework, so it's better to provide them with a designated space. If this is the situation in outpatient departments, the inpatient departments are packed with even more learning. Many children who need to be hospitalized adjust their beds to an upright position use the tabletops as writing desks, and work diligently. When parents come to visit, they bring stacks of homework, instead of the usual necessities for hospitalization. In China, many people used to look forward to getting sick when they were children, because being sick meant not going to school and enjoying sick person's favorable treatment. As for homework, they were justified in not doing it. However, the treatment of today's children is completely different. They probably don't want to get sick at all, because even when they're sick, they don't get the favorable treatment and have to endure discomfort to finish their homework. Many people may wonder why China needs to be so intense. Doing homework when sick, isn't that bad for your health? Aren't they afraid of worsening their body condition? However, the reason they still choose to do homework when sick is not just because of overwork, but because Chinese students have so much homework. Even when they're sick, there's no special consideration from teachers to postpone their assignments, so if they don't finish today's homework, tomorrow's workload will only double. Even without being sick, staying up late to finish homework is already the norm for Chinese students. Not only do they have massive amounts of homework, but they also face enormous academic pressure, including exam stress, peer pressure and competition, societal expectations, and pressure from parents. They believe that if their grades decline, it must be their own fault, and not because they actually haven't learnt the material. This is especially the case when challenging questions often appear at the end of the exam paper. Many parents record videos on Douyin, the Chinese version of TikTok, showing their children breaking down due to academic pressure, which is heartbreaking to watch. What's wrong with you? I finished it. Whoa, are you crying? I'm useless. What do you mean you are useless? You're such a talented person. How can you say that? I can't finish my homework, can't memorize and can't do well on assignments. My head hurts and I just can't understand. Many people don't understand. It's not just you. But I don't care if others understand or not. I have to understand or else I won't pass the exam and the score is mine. That's absolutely right. Many people have also posted online about seeing young children carrying backpacks that are significantly larger than their own bodies, slowly making their way to school. These oversized backpacks weigh down the kids, causing them to sway as they walk. And in some cases, the backpacks are so full that the zippers can't even close. Many people pointed out that these backpacks might even be difficult for adults to carry. However, it's not only the unfortunate students who are affected by China's educational overwork. Many parents are also pushed to the brink. There's an old saying in China that goes, hope for the child to become a dragon, as the dragon symbolizes power and success. Many parents hope their children can get ahead from the start, so they start teaching their children and enroll them in various classes at a young age, filling their schedules to the brim. Slowly, this turns into making their children work themselves to exhaustion at the starting line. Even if some parents don't want their children to endure such hardships and hope they can grow freely and happily, seeing the excellence of their peers makes them abandon their initial plans and ultimately join the overwork cycle. Like the fifth grade elementary school student in Haidian, Beijing, who obtained a level one programmer certificate from the Institute of Computing of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, but he still ranks at the bottom of his class. This elementary school student has already surpassed children from ordinary families. But because the parents come from high academic backgrounds, they are surrounded by a circle of even more outstanding children, 
such as those who are directly admitted to universities and not needing to take the college entrance exams or those who can already represent the country in competitions. The parents of this elementary school student can only enroll him in more extracurricular activities and various competitions, hoping that he can also become a source of pride within their circle. As the Chinese New Year approaches, many schools are beginning their winter vacation. However, Jiangsu province stands out, being the province that consistently produces the most top scorers in China's national college entrance exams. Students here face the highest academic pressure in the country. Even their winter break is delayed due to end-of-term exams. While students in other regions are already on holiday preparing for the Chinese New Year, students in Jiangsu province are buried in their books, studying diligently. Recently, a video shared by a full-time mother in Jiangsu province on Douyin has sparked extensive discussions among people and fuels a new wave of parental anxiety and competition. Let me ask my friends from other places. After your kids start elementary school, don't you need to buy a printer? How do you print learning materials for them? If your child needs IV when they are sick, do you dare to hang it on their right hand? If so, how will they do their homework? How will they catch up on missed assignments and exams? How will they make up for the missed classes? Are grandparents allowed to attend parent-teacher meetings at your kid's school? Isn't your winter break 19 days? With 14 days of extra classes during the break, isn't it like that for you too? Soon after the video's release, parents from other provinces followed suit, boasting about how far their province goes to promote educational competitiveness. I'm not sure about Jiangsu. But as a mother from Shandong, having a printer is a must. Speaking of academic pressure, Shandong has a say in it. While other provinces are on holiday, our kindergartens here haven't closed yet. Is it that we don't have a break? It is that we simply do not want to take a break. If we do one less craft, memorize one less poem, learn one less character, how can we manage? How can we expect to score 100 in first grade? We are catching up to the involution from childhood. We don't like going to Harbin, it's too cold. We prefer doing practice problems and preparing for exams. We aim for civil service exams, government recruitment, Tsinghua, Beijing University, and Shandong University. Shandong people even think Dong Yuhui, currently a popular live streamer for East by Holding, should pass the civil service exam first. Kids here in Shandong wake up around 5 a.m. and don't sleep until almost midnight. We just don't like sleeping. We believe in early rising and late sleeping for good health. Next time, someone asks about Shandong specialties, it's all about exam papers. The anxiety within the parent community today resembles what economists call the bandwagon effect. It's like being in a movie theater where one person in the front row stands up to see better prompting everyone behind to do the same, to avoid being blocked. Eventually, everyone is standing, feeling sore and tired. They're watching the same movie they paid for initially, but each person ends up spending more effort. Similarly, in China today, all parents want their children to have a bright future. But somewhere along the line, these expectations turned into a tool for pressuring children. In recent years, Chinese education has gradually shifted responsibility onto parents, especially during the pandemic, when most students were learning from home. Schools often requested parents to supervise their children's learning progress. With limited guidance from teachers, students struggled to understand lessons or complete assignments, leaving them no choice but to turn to their parents for help. It raises the question, are the students doing their homework or are the parents doing it for them? Many parents had to quit their jobs to fully support their children's education making their academic performance the sole focus. In other words, these parents have transferred the involution they faced in their careers onto their children, making their children's grades their responsibility. The mental math is wrong. The vertical math is wrong. How did you do this one? Multiplication, 9 times 9 equals 45. Aren't you angry? You don't know this? If you don't know, don't bother doing it. Really, just don't bother. Tomorrow, I'll block all your teachers. Do you know what it is like? Even in my dreams at night, I keep dreaming that your teachers stood next to my bed in a circle, asking me to hand in the homework. Even the gym teacher is there. 
My daughter's grades are out. Let me show everyone. 36 points. This is the result of me studying with her every day in this house. I wake up the earliest and sleep the latest every day. I study with her at night, on weekends, without any slack. Honestly, this is more exhausting than my job. If she didn't do well, when I used to work, I had excuse. I said I was too busy to spend time with my child. Now, if she doesn't do well, it's all my responsibility. I don't even have an excuse. The parent-teacher meeting is coming up. What am I going to do? Everyone might have occasionally seen parents driven to despair by homework and grades. It's sometimes humorous and helpless. But since parents have to take on the role of teachers, what are the teachers in China doing? What's the point of establishing schools? This education involution has made society feel like it's wound up like a spring. It won't stop, and it doesn't dare to stop. Many Chinese families project their uncertainty about the future onto their children, believing that education is the most important way to move up the social ladder. It's like rowing against the current. If you don't advance, you'll fall back. Parents strive to shape their children into their future pride. It's not necessarily because of great expectations for the future, but due to societal tension and anxiety. It's sad that even though young adults know that this pressure is social competition and try to resist it by lying flat, this self-exploitation and lack of freedom has already spread to elementary school students and preschoolers. These kids don't know that besides studying, there are many other ways in this world. They can only listen to adults, start exhausting themselves, and get used to competition at an early age. Childhood, which should have been used to feel the warmth of the world, has disappeared unconsciously, only to be replaced by the frenzy and pressure of the adult world.